Um, and then the last one is the customer's language or culture. Now, Joe and Don were both just talking about that a little bit, about what's their language or culture. It goes further than just every corporation has its own culture. It has its own words. It has its own slangs. You know, you get in network marketing, they talk about building great legs. In other businesses, that means something different. <laughs> You know, I mean, so you got to understand what it is you're talking about and what the language is of that culture. I remember my wife is Filipino, and her first year here, I decided for the fall, I was going to give her the traditional, you know, fall thing. And I went out and bought one of those little six-inch ornamental pumpkins, and I brought it home and put it on the counter. And I went in and took a shower, and I came out, and she cooked it. <laughs> I did not share what the purpose of this was, you know. And the funny thing was, is the same week, you know, those pull-up signs that you have that you buy for, uh, you know, when you go to trade shows and stuff? Well, I had one made up with a picture of me with my finger pointing, and on the bottom it says, Master Communicator, Thomas Armour. And I'm saying, boy, I sure failed that in the first week I had the sign, you know. So uh, I did not communicate this very, very well. There is a culture that you have to find out what it is. Okay, there's perceptions. You know, there's culture in everything that we do. Okay, what I'd like everybody to do is take out a piece of paper, or you've got your piece of paper there. I would like you to write down how many, on a scale of zero to 100, a few is to you. How many is a few on a scale of zero to 100? How many is a few? How many is a couple? How many is always? How many is many? And how many is never? Okay, everybody done? Scale of 1 to 100, or 0 to 100, excuse me. How many is a few? You hear some answers? 7 to 15. 3 to 4? 3? Okay. What would you say, 7 to 15? Okay. If he says to me, I have a few of these projects I want you to bid for me on, so give me a good price. And I'm thinking three, and he's thinking 15. Am I going to give him the wrong price? Am I going to blow that job? Way out of the water. See, that they're in just in our English language, we don't know what it means. So not only do we need to find the corporate language, but we need to understand questions. So when someone says to me, i got a lot of projects I want you to deal on, my first question is, how many is a lot? Because <laughs> I want to know. I want to know specifics. I don't just accept anything. You always got to drill a little bit deeper and ask some more. Couple. How many, what, what answers we got in the room? Two. Anybody have anything other than two? You'd be amazed in big groups. There's always somebody that has more than a two. So I always ask why, but it's you know just one of those things. Always. How many is always? One hundred. Anybody have anything other than a hundred? What? Ninety-eight. Why ninety-eight? Well, because you know, isn't always always <laughs> right. You know what the funny thing about it? It's always a woman that says that, too. Always is not always. Okay, so uh, I don't know why that is, but it's, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's always one of those things. I never, but there's always one in the room. That's just how that works. Um, how many is many? 40 plus. 20 or more? What about here? 60? You said 20, right? You said 60. If I'm bidding, that's a big difference in numbers, isn't it? If I got 20 of something or 60 or something, that's a huge difference in price. I need to know what that is. So that's language. And then, of course, you add on to this language the, the different language of women and men. <laughs> you know, like guys, when, when, a, when a woman says, okay, go for it, it's really not permission. It's a dare. You, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's just kind of how that works, right? It's Kind of like when I say to you, when a woman says to you, I'll be ready in five minutes when you're going out for the night, what does that mean? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, nothing, right? Nothing, exactly. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, you know, you got to make sure you got a common frame of reference what we're talking about, you know. So, and and I, I found that the word fine means you really better shut up right now. Yeah, so you've, you've pushed it way past the point when she says fine, it's time to close the mouth, right? Okay, never. How many is never? Anybody have anything other than zero? Okay, come on, men. You know that never is not always never. It just means more begging a lot of times, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's just how that works, right? Never is not always never either, just like always is not always always, right? So it's just one of those things. So we have to throw in not only we have our behaviors, but we also have it men and women too. Because I remember when I first learned about this stuff, I read it from Florence Littower. And she's an I woman. And she described an I as something that I didn't understand, <laughs> 
And I didn't think I was an ion. I didn't know what I was after reading some of her stuff. And then I picked up Dr. Rome's book, and he was an I, and it was like, that's me. <laughs> right there, that's it. He's me. So I knew what I was, because sometimes from our sexual orientation, male or female, okay, we handle the different personalities differently. You know, a woman I is different than a male I. Just is. You know, same as the D's, same as the C's, right? We all have different personalities we have in there. Okay? And that comes from the perspective that we're coming from. That comes from our culture. It comes from our background. You know, my wife's from the Philippines. I go over to Asia. They are an S society. Right? What do you think Hispanics are? I society. Hey, let's have a party. You know, so we're going to go out and have some fun. See, different cultures have different attitudes. Okay, so it's, we got a lot of things that get involved in this. So there are a lot of factors that factor in there. But we're selling to behaviors. Right? We're selling to behaviors, but the behaviors look slightly differently depending upon cultures, depending upon sexual orientation, depending upon all that stuff. Factors in there. So these are things that you need to be observant of as you're talking. You know, as I said, when I read Florence Littower and she described an I woman, you know, she talked about leaving her keys and forgetting her lipsticks and lipsticks on all different shapes and sizes. And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> don't get it. <laughs> Don't get it, you know? And it's great. She, it's a great thing for her. She does it at seminars, and people open up these bags, and everybody shows their lipsticks. She can tell what personalities they are by the way their lipsticks are shaped. I'm like, okay, that's great. Doesn't relate to me, though. <laughs> you know, so it's kind of like I didn't get it there. But then when I started reading Dr. Rome stuff, I got it. So that's why we need to make sure we understand the whole picture. And the only way we can is to ask. And then after we ask, we need to listen. And really listen. Listen for the hidden facts. Because that's what you'll find out. So I remember I was working on the Swan and Dolphin Hotel, and I'm asking questions, and I'm talking to the guy, and they're telling me about that, you know, they, they like my designs, I like some of the stuff we're working on, they like my prototypes, but they're worried about how big of a company I was. So we lost that job. But I found out through talking to the guy who was the company that they trusted because they were bigger, and I went and made it for them. I spent a lot of money designing the job, working on it, so I did it anyway. I just did it through them, and that's because I asked questions, and I listened for the hidden things. I listened for what was the problem. The problem wasn't the quality or what we could do. They were just worried because we were a small $3 million a year company, and this other company was like a half a billion dollar a year company, and they just felt like they were, depending on their hotels to be open on time, that they'd be better off with them, even though they were more money and not the stuff we were designing. So we ended up going in and designing it. We got our full price because they were more money and gave them what they wanted. Everybody was happy. You know, they made their peace. We all, you know, they, they had their structure, so everybody was good. So you have to ask, you have to listen. Ask and listen. Really listen, okay? Don't just think about it. Okay, what tellers do? What are tellers? Those are the people that are not sellers, they're tellers, right? They talk, right? You ever have somebody at a chamber meeting, and you're sitting there, and you're talking to them, and you ask them what they do for a living, and they tell you, and they keep telling you, and they keep telling you. And then you get tired of them, and you start looking at your watch, trying to give them a hint that, like, I'm done here, <laughs> politely, right? <laughs> this is an I'm undone, please shut up. And what they do is they talk more. <laughs> okay, and then you start really, really starting to, you know, like, look over your shoulder and go, okay, what's now? Now they start talking louder. <laughs> okay, like, I wasn't already, you know, hearing you. It's like, I, I heard you. I just don't want to hear you anymore. I'm done. <laughs> okay, please stop. You know, and then they start talking faster. As you start to walk away, they follow you and talk even faster to make sure they get everything in they wanted to get in before you leave. Okay, that's what tellers do. Okay. What you have to learn to do is don't be a teller. Don't be a seller. You know, you don't have to have, well, I, I, you know, if you're at a leads group and you're going to stand up for one meeting, you want to have an elevator pitch. Okay, but when I'm talking to someone, I'm not giving them my elevator pitch. I'm asking them questions. I'm asking. Because when you ask, they tell you.